Well, good morning everybody. How y'all doing? Pretty good here and welcome to the channel. Real quick, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. A little disclaimer before we get started here. Some of these things do not try at home. Now, what I'm going to talk about today, some, some tips. If you're a budding modding enthusiast, if you've got a Tacoma and you're looking to add some stuff, do your own mods, these are a few tips for you. Some things that you should and shouldn't do. Now, the reason I'm putting this out, some of these things are going to be blatantly obvious to some of you guys, you seasoned modders out there. But for guys just starting out, or maybe even some people that have just gotten lazy over time, here's a little reminder of some things that you should and shouldn't do if you're looking to mod your Tacoma. Okay, first place we're going to start is under the hood here. If you're doing anything electrical, or maybe you're working around the airbag, for example, putting in the kicker speakers, which do have electrical connections, you have to take off that A-pillar cover, right, to be able to get to the speakers themselves. Now, underneath that A-pillar cover is an airbag. And the last thing you want to do when you're doing so, something so simple as replacing your speakers is set that airbag off, right? That'll ruin your day. So, real quick, just pop the hood, go underneath here, and remove the negative terminal on the battery. It takes a 10 millimeter socket, or even a wrench. I mean, it's not difficult. Take the little bolt off there, or the little or a nut, I should say, and pull that terminal off. Now, what's the worst thing that's going to happen if you do that, or when you do that? You're going to have to reset the clock on your radio. Heck of a lot easier and cheaper to do that than taking your truck in with a blown electrical system or an airbag that went off. Pretty simple. Make sure you disconnect that negative terminal on your battery. Next thing is, make sure that if you're taking trim pieces off inside the truck, I happen to have an A-pillar trim piece or cover here from a Tundra, make sure that you're using plastic pry tools. You do not want to use metal screwdrivers because you know when you're prying these off, they're in there nice and tight. You have to get around an edge somewhere. And unless you have long fingernails, which I don't, you're going to need something to kind of grab the edge to get this going. Now, I'm going to show you. If you use a plastic pry tool, I mean, it's plastic, right? It's not going to mar the surface, right? I mean, unless you have some really, really strong plastic. If you slip while you're taking this off, you know, you're pushing on the edge and slip right down the side of the plastic trim piece here, you're not going to have a problem when you're using one of these plastic trim tools. Now, if you're using a screwdriver and you're prying on the edge, first of all, you're going to mar up the edge here, right? I mean, you might slip and then you're going to put a gouge right down. I don't know if you guys, look at that. Look at that nice little gouge. All I was doing, I was trying to get this off and I went right down the edge and put a nice little gouge right there in the plastic. I mean, why do that? These things cost like, I don't know, six bucks, something like that, sometimes less, I don't know, even a credit card, if you don't have a trim piece, or a trim tool rather, will work better than doing this to your trim piece. Use a plastic pry tool, buy a set, even if you have to change a bulb somewhere in the truck down the road, you're going to have to pry off some kind of plastic piece in the truck. These are invaluable. Ask me how I know. Okay, next up is wiring. You know, if you're doing any kind of wiring in your truck, you know, you're installing some LED lights or, you know, like the light bar, I should say, or maybe you're doing that garage door opener mod I've done before or putting in a switch and connecting the wiring harness or something like that, don't use black tape. Let me show you what happens. You have your two wires that you're going to connect, right? And if you do what we all do, and I was brought up to do it this way, you twist it together like this, you know, you twist it up and then you, you fold it over like so, and then you grab your old black tape, because you know, this is uh, it's pretty easy to do with black tape. So you grab your old black tape, you tear off a little piece there, you know, so that's easy, you don't need any tools for that. Get your two wires together, they look pretty good, right? They're all twisty and stuff. You take your tape and you wrap it around there, you know, get it looking good. Maybe if you're like me and you're into overkill, you do it, you know, five, six times so that the tape is, you know, ten times the thickness of the wire when you're done. But you, 
you wrap it all up because you know you got to do that. You got to protect it from contacting other things because you don't want anything to short out. So you got that all together. I mean, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? For a real quick uh, little response. But what happens? How strong is this connection? It's that strong. Not very strong. Now, how do I know this? I recently did a, uh, a demodding in the truck back there, and I had actually done this, broke my own rule, and twisted some wires together. And when I did that, and, uh, and removed that mod, I should say, the wire pulled apart just like that. I wasn't putting a lot of force on it or anything. I was just removing things. And it actually just pulled apart just that easily. Now, there is something that I discovered recently. I'm not sponsored by these people, but I'm going to tell you what it is. They're called solder seal connections or a solder seal connector. And all it is, it's this little connector thing. You stick the wire in one side like so. And in the middle of it, I don't know, hopefully you guys can see that little silver piece right here. That's actually solder. So you stick your two wires together like so, so they cross right in that solder area. And then you heat this thing up with a heat gun. What it does is it shrinks this connector and melts that solder to meld, or solder, your two wires together. And you cannot pull this apart, at least not easily. I've done uh, some work with these before on the channel and I gotta say, if you're into any kind of modding or any kind of electrical, this thing is awesome. And they offer a gazillion different sizes. I just have a little kit here. Again, I am not sponsored by these people. I just came across it on the web and I thought, man, what a cool little uh, thing to do for guys who uh, are not that comfortable with wiring to begin with. It makes it simple. The last part, invest in a little kit with some shrink um, tubing. After you've got all that done, I would just put a little bit of shrink tubing over it. Again, take your heat gun, you know, the source that you use to melt the connector with, and uh, put a little shrink tubing on it just to give it a little more hold and a little more protection. If you're going to do the wiring, do it right, because the alternative, if something breaks and shorts out or, God forbid, causes a fire in your truck, it's going to be much more costly and much more of a pain to deal with than if you just do it right the first time. All right, next up. We're back under the hood here. Do not take out your aggression on innocent bolts, on innocent nuts. They get tight, they only get so tight, and if you go beyond that, you're gonna have a problem. Uh, I have done this many times. I have stripped nuts, I have stripped bolts, I have broken the heads off of bolts. Why? I don't know why. Because I think I have to get it so tight that it's going to take some kind of catastrophic event to break it loose. I don't know. A good example I have, and this is something that I have done uh, on this truck fairly recently actually. These little bolts down here actually hold the grill on and they go into a nylon insert. And they're tight right now, but you can see I am barely putting any pressure on that and the reason I can turn it like that and only put a little bit of pressure on it is because they're stripped. I have tightened those things so tight that uh, I probably could pull that out with my fingers. I don't know, hopefully not. I don't want to try because I don't want to make it any worse. But don't take your aggression out on innocent bolts, on innocent nuts. They didn't do anything to you. Get them tight and then stop, stop. If you have to really get on something to tighten it up, you're probably going too far. Don't do what I've done, and if you've done it before, and I'm sure if you do any work on anything, you probably have, stop the innocent slaughter of bolts and nuts. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is removing trim pieces. You know, most of the trim pieces are held on by these little nubs and things, and they just kind of slip in and hook over something, or you have those little pressure uh, connectors or holders that you just pull things out. One thing you don't want to do is pull on those things like you're trying to win a strongman contest, right? Because if you have to put that much force into them, something's probably wrong. You either have the wrong angle or that piece needs to be squeezed or something or, or you just don't have the right process to get it out. Now, the example of this, this is that trim piece again. This is actually from a Tundra. This actually, these pieces here actually hook, and they're the same way on the Tacoma. They go in and they hook, right? And if you look here, 
This one is ruined. It's cut, you guys can see here. It's actually broken uh, right here on the edge. Uh, that's something, of course, you don't want to do. Now, why does that matter? Yeah, I can push it back a little bit and get it into the spot in this case and probably still stick it down in there. But I am not going to have the hold that I had before with this the way it was supposed to be. And luckily, it didn't just break off. I mean, I'm never going to use this piece again anyway. But if I was pulling it off to do a speaker mod or something, let's say, I would want to put it back in. And the reason you don't want to, you know, just stick it back in there if this happens is because it will rattle. You know, these little pieces hold these parts in there tight, tightly, right? I mean, you have a couple here on the back that hook over stuff. This one is actually where the nut goes in. And if they're not tight, they're going to rattle in there. You know, you're going to drive along. I know you guys don't want to hear that. I see lots of comments and lots of posts. People asking, what can I do to fix this? And they'll play a little sound clip of... And that's what you get. Probably somebody has taken that part off, whatever it is that's rattling in their truck, and, uh, and broke something or stressed something too much like this. And, uh, and now they have a noise or a sound that they are never going to get rid of. So make sure you don't overpower when you're taking things off. It's not necessary. A gentle pull is usually all it takes. All right, the last little tip, little piece of advice that I'm going to give you guys. When you're doing the job, make sure that you're using the right tool. In other words, if the bolt that you're taking out is metric, don't try to use an SAE socket, a regular socket. Use a metric socket. You know, if you're cranking on here, you know, you're cranking away, and then it gets to the point where it gets tight, so you're going to get on it a little bit, right? Now, your socket doesn't really fit on there well, so you know what's going to happen. If you've done this, you know what's going to happen. It's going to give. Don't let this happen to you. Use the right tools. Okay, there are my, uh, I think there were five or six little tips that if you're going to get into modding your Tacoma, make sure that you follow these. They're very simple things. They'll save you a little bit of time and you won't have any problems or at least not as many problems as you might if you don't do things the right way. Um, especially when it comes to personal injury. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Um, let me know. Leave a tip down below. Did I leave it or a comment down below? Are there any tips that I left off? Little simple things. I'd like to know. Might help me out in the future. As usual, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the web. Safe modding. Have a great day. Bye. Little disclaimer. It's just ketchup. Nobody, nobody was injured in making this video, I'm just saying.